Ruts. R-U-T-S. Ruts. You know when you're having a bad day, you call your mom up and you're like, Mom, I'm not doing good. And she says, Honey, it sounds like you're in a rut. Well, that's not a good thing. But on the cyclocross bike, being in a rut is actually an amazing thing. You want to ride ruts. So today's video is going to be all about how to make ruts, how to ride in the rut, and to have a great day out on the cyclocross bike. So why is it important to learn and to use ruts when you see them out on the course? If you can imagine an off-camber section of riding, something that's slightly downhill that's like either sandy or muddy, well, if you try to go across it, you're just going to slide out and go down. But if there's a nice rut, then you're going to be able to put your tires into it and ride it like a train on tracks across that obstacle. It's also important to think about a rut as something that allows you to carry your momentum and speed. If you're coming into a rut in a sand pit, well then you're able to carry your momentum through because someone has already made that rut. Whereas if you're just having to plow through straight sand, it's going to be really, really hard on your bike. So first off, let's check out how we make a rut. First things first, where do you make these ruts, Jeremy? Well, if you have a local sand pit like this one, that's a good idea. You could also look up a local volleyball court where people obviously play volleyball. That, you can make nice ruts into that, make a little track. Also, if you have a local pond or a beach, those are all great places to get your sand training on. Okay, so here at the pit, where are we gonna do a fresh sand bar? Well, right down here, if you can look, there is untouched, completely manicured by the uh, mother nature and rain. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down this hill and I'm just gonna make a simple U-turn in the sand pit. And that's gonna give me a sense of showing you guys from start to finish how you make a rut. It's gonna take at least five passes before you get a nice rut going. That is what it takes to be able to make a rut. You guys saw six, seven passes, something like that. Then I've got now a really good line. The hardest part of this for me is actually the entrance. You can see that this part was the softest amount of sand, but now that I've plowed my front wheel through there, I've got it down to the underground, meaning like the hardest part, it's tamped down. So now I've got a nice straight shot all the way to this turn. I can use all my finesse and my body weight, picking my head up, all these little tips that I'm gonna to talk to you guys more about to be able to get through this perfect. Now that you've got something nailed down and a good rut going, start to think about how you're weighting up the bike. You wanna make sure that you're getting your weight really far back, like as far back as the seat will allow you to be on it. You also wanna look now, where are you going? A good friend of mine, Ben Spees, a former MotoGP superstar, once told me that you have to pick your head up and look through the turns. And the last thing is, you don't wanna have a high cadence because you'll literally be bouncing all over the bike completely off balance. So make sure you have a nice lower to medium cadence when you're riding in the sand. Let's go. I've got my weight really far back. I'm looking up with my head. It takes me right through the turn perfectly. So you wanna make sure that when you're gonna ride sand that you have a pair of slick tires. Lots of manufacturers make them. I'm using the Continental Cyclocross Speed Tires, which are just about 100% slick. They've got little knobs all over them, but you wanna make sure that you don't have any tires that have bite on them. Tires that have bite, not great. You wanna have a big traction patch, meaning like the most amount of tire that you can possibly have on the ground, and slick tires are actually what complete that. So you also want to bring your tire pressure way, way down. You don't want to have 50, 60 pounds. You need to have nice, soft pressure in your tires so that the tire is moving underneath you. The sand is also moving, so that in order to have the tire moving while the sand is moving, you have to have low pressure. 
So to reinforce how important ruts are, we're here at the local track where we've got this nice uphill section, and then we come into an off camber, pretty steep downhill section. This section rides exactly like I said before, like a train on tracks. But if I was to hit this fresh, like something here or whatever, I'd be completely flying over the bars. So I'm gonna attempt to show you guys what it looks like in the ruts and not in the ruts. Okay, so I'm gonna take this perfectly manicured rut all the way down. Whoa! And now I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like if we don't use the rut. I can't promise exactly how this is gonna go, but. Oh gosh! Uh, uh. <laughs> so, the key takeaway you always want to use the road most traveled, and that is why ruts work so well. well here I am at the apex of a figure eight. A couple years back, the Cyclocross World Cup in Coxide of Belgium was canceled. I was actually there, sitting in a hotel room, having flown transatlantically to find out that the race was canceled because of wind and rain. And I was thinking in my head, well, that's not that cool. Wout Van Er, a pal of mine, posted on his Instagram later that day when he got home in his local sand pit that he went out and did a big figure eight in that sand pit, and it pretty much caught the world of social media on fire. Every single rider went out and did a figure figure eight in their sand pit, and uh, well, the rest is history. We've been doing figure eights here ever since. Shout out to Wout on getting that video up and teaching us all a little bit about how he trains. So why does a figure eight make sense? Well, it's constantly challenging you. So I always create a figure eight. Here's one from a previous training session that we have already. It allows you to constantly be challenged. You're always pushing yourself and you have to get a nice big stretch of sand to be able to make one, and then you can link it up with other sections. So then you've got that drop, you've got that U-turn over there, then you've got your figure eight, and then you've got yourself a pretty hard little sand training circuit. Maybe a little bit of inspiration about how you ride these figure eights. Here I come, is make sure that you use all of the things that we talked about. You wanna keep your weight back, you wanna pick your head up, you wanna make sure that you're in the right gear, and it's all about balance and agility. Everything that I talked about is gonna make this drill a lot of fun, and it's gonna really help you become a good rider in the sand and in the mud and where cyclocross riders really shine in the technical stuff. I'm always hearing at the races, commit to the rut, commit to the rut. Now you guys have some good tips to be able to actually commit to the rut. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You got something out of it. Share it around, tell your friends, get out there, start riding some figure eights, post them on the gram, let us know what's going on. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment below. If you wanna see other great tutorials, how to cyclocross stuff, check out right over here. If you wanna to subscribe to GCN, right there. <laughs>